just now we just got a job. So uh, it ain't nothing more to rap about. We got work to do. So, um, oh, I think we talked about this a long time ago. I'll be honest, you know, I've been living in Baltimore all my life, but I'm not quite comfortable with the structure of things, how it runs from top to bottom. You understand what I'm saying? I think you should give some, some yes, so we'll know exactly how this whole political system works and how we can assist in, in, you know, how to deal with it. Because I know about who the mayor is and some of the neighborhood council people and all that, but how does this whole system work? I think black people, people go, we don't always know, and a lot of times that's why we don't vote. We don't really know how this system totally breaks down, how it works, and how we can intervene. Let me take a quick couple minutes. Um, okay, Baltimore City has what they call a strong mayoral system, right? And, and, and quickly, I, I was in City Hall and the curator of City Hall had given a tour. And she took the folks up to the Board of Estimates room and, and, and everybody sat down in the audience. And she said, this is a dictatorial mayoral ship. Now, a dictator has absolute control. Can nobody do nothing to change what a dictator says or does, right? And that's the kind of mayor that we have in the city. Dictatorial, to the point 
that the mayor controls every department, she controls the budget, she controls the police, right? Yeah. So there is no real counter to this. And, and what we know about power is absolute power corrupts absolutely. And so when we, we look at the fact that in Congress, Congress's role is the check and balance of the president. The city council should be the check and balance of the mayor. Now, does the city council have the power to really do that? I say yes. So we have the strong mayor and we have a weak city council, right? And then we have this, this controller. And the word controller in and of itself is the person responsible for the fiscal oversight of how the money is spent. And we got a comptroller that's even weaker than the council. Because the comptroller ain't auditing, ain't checking, right? Ain't validating that we spend the money appropriately, right? So, so now we have these three entities, this, this triumvirate of our government, mayor, city council, comptroller. And they're not checking each other. I want them to check on each other. I want them to be looking over the mayor's shoulder. What you doing, right, you know? But that's not happening. Now, I believe it can happen. I believe they have the authority in their current position to do that. But our council people have rolled over on every occasion imaginable and abdicated their responsibility and let the mayor's strong control take charge. Now we can, we can change that somehow, right? We can have in the council, then let's look at the council, it is 15 elected people. 15. There are 14 districts across the city. The council president is the one position on the council that is elected at large across the city. The 14 districts vote on their representatives. So I live in the 8th district. So I'm only going to vote for the council of people running in the 8th district. I can't vote for the people in Sandtown, Winchester. Can't vote for the people over by Hopkins and Baltimore. I can only vote for the 8th district. So that's wherever you live, you will elect one of the 14 for your district. And in addition, you can vote for city council members, which is a citywide. Now, the fact that our current city council president doesn't feel the need to get out during this election season is a problem, mm -hmm. a real problem. The fact that our controller doesn't think that she needs to get out during this election season mm -hmm. is a problem. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. so, so, so the mayor's seat is wide open because the incumbent isn't working. But for the county president, he's running again, but you wouldn't know. The she comptroller, she's running again, but you wouldn't know. And, and when do you have a conversation with them? You know, they need to be here just like I'm standing here. You know, I, you know, I, have, I have put myself before you, right? And I'm allowing you to ask me whatever you want to ask me, because I don't have anything to hide. But why are they? So from my perspective, the council hasn't done what it, you know, the, the, the council has, has a paragraph in the charter, one paragraph, that describes their role. And this is that the council has the legal authority to enact laws, ordinances, that govern 
how this government has walked through the years. So the council is our legislative body. It is our legislative body. So all the laws, all the ordinances on the books, whether they're good or bad, this council has authority over. Nobody else. Again, the mayor can enact legislation, the comptroller can but the president and the council members can write laws. So I say, there's some laws on the books, and I use the word injurious, that are injurious to us. So why are they still on the books? So if the council can change any law that exists in Baltimore City, and there are bad laws, what do they do? Why haven't they fixed it? I think the mere fact that they don't do an annual review of legislation is laziness, more or less. I mean, it, they, it's a part-time job for them. You know, they get paid forty-nine thousand a year, right? And it's a part-time job. So, so yeah, we, we won't say that. Okay, but. But from my perspective, <clears throat> there are laws on the books that allow the city to um, take your house if you don't pay your water bill. Mm -hmm. Why is that law still on the books? There are laws on the books that say if you don't pay your taxes on time, they can take your house. Why is that law still on the books? There are laws on the books that we absolutely know hurt us, mm -hmm. but they're still on the books. So, so when it comes to what the role of the city council is, sure, Baltimore was established in 1797. 1797. So that's when they first started writing laws. So since 1797 till 2016, there's a whole lot of laws on the book. <laughs> so the question is, what do we do about it? You know, one of the things that I'd like to set up is an advisory board for the council where I bring in smart people to help advise me. You know, I want lawyers, I want scientists, I want, I want, I want advisors <laughs> to help us look at what is going on in the city. I know that other cities have done a legislative review where they hire a consultant to look at the laws that are in place and make recommendations about whether they're good or bad. Have we ever done that? No. Anybody thought about it? No. I want to do that. Is that crazy? <laughs> um, but, you know, this whole conversation about what our government does or doesn't do, our government, it should be of the people, for the people, by the people. But when we get people who go in there just to occupy the seat, what does that mean? Yeah, man.